This program has been made possible in part by to welcome Barry Klein and Laura Bryant. And today is gonna to be very ruffly, correct? You're right. Okay, and I just love what I have on, Barry, and I know this is your creation, so let's show everybody. Okay, well, we're gonna, we are gonna indeed talk about ruffles. Okay. And they're very in, they're very chic right now, and so we're just zooming along with the different kinds of things. And what I love about it is that the yarns right now are ruffling. You're not actually knitting a ruffle, it's the yarn that ruffles. I'm not knitting 400 stitches. Right, it's a, no. lot, it's a lot easier than... Uh -huh. um, oh, that is great. Yeah, much, much easier than if you uh -huh. have to actually knit the stitches to right. do it. Some people call it cheating. I say let the yarn do the work so you don't have to. You know, always find the simpler way. I call it creative. Exactly, exactly. And it's kind of what you do with it that counts. Uh -huh. So the things that we've got, Laura's got a, one of the versions in front of her right now. And when you look at it, it looks like string. Okay. okay. Looks like a now, band. What's wild be... is this is what I'm wearing. This is the ruffle. That is your ruffle. That is around the neckline of this sweater. Because really? the, the yarn Laura. opens up. And when you open it up and you look at the yarn itself, what it is is like a fisherman's net. Yes, it is. It's created with elongated string mm -hmm. that's then tied and knotted together, almost a macrame. Mm -hmm. And when you knit it, what you're doing is you're picking up. Now you're going to knit at the edge, right? You're only knitting the edge. Okay. And by doing that, the weight of the ribbon and gravity pulls it and opens it up. And when you knit from hole to hole to hole across, or just along the edge, hole to hole to hole, it gathers it together and creates the ruffle and effect. And I don't have to iron it open. You do not have to iron That's it open. The best Are you going into every hole? You're or going can into, you skip every hole? You can skip. If you go into every hole, the more it gathers and the more ruffles you have. If you skip holes, it just becomes more ruffleette. <laughs> ruffleette. <laughs> I don't okay. know how else to say it. But, <laughs> and, and what you're wearing, Shay, is the same yarn. Uh -huh. And so in here, you can see that we've done one stitch to one stitch. Mm -hmm. And in this case, because it's one row, it's actually used as embellishment. You're not really knitting the edge, you're using your base yarn and knitting through the edge, pulling it through. So you have the lace and your base yarn going at the same time. At the same time, right. Okay. So an embellishment is something that lays on top, it's a layer, okay. versus actually knitting it, where on this scarf right mm -hmm. here, it was actually knit. And you can count your rows when you're doing multiple rows so you know okay. where you are because you count your layers. So here's one, here's two, here's three. And when you flip it over, we've got three more. Okay. Four, five, six. Uh -huh. You're carrying one yarn behind this row, correct? Right, right. Okay. Right. All right, now what's this? This well, is really great. This is another variation. Uh -huh. And it is also indeed a ribbon. Mm -hmm. And what's fun about it is it's got a chained edge, top and bottom. It's filled in at the bottom, but on the top, there's open boxes. Mm -hmm. And so the tops of those boxes become your stitch. And as you knit them, when you go from one to the next Gathers to the next, up. again, it's gathering, creating mm -hmm. the ruffles. In this instance, it's knit every row. Mm -hmm. And so it looks circular. Uh -huh. You can see just how ruffled it is. It starts out completely flat, but it's gathered. And this oh. one doesn't have any base yarn. It's strictly the ribbon. Uh -huh. And so when you're knitting the ribbon, which we're going to show, right? right? When you're knitting the ribbon, you're actually pulling just the edge through the edge. Okay. Right. Yeah. The stitch, the, okay. the thread across the open part, part of the box is your stitch. And we will okay. show you how to do so that. So you're never pulling the whole ribbon through you anything. You know what? We're looking at all these ruffles on the table, and I'm worrying that we're not going to be able to show them how to do this. So I think maybe, Barry, you should pick your needles up. Okay. We have talked about this, and we the important part is learn how. Perfect. So now, okay, so this is? So it starts out as a flat ribbon, and you can see the tops of the open boxes. And when you cast on, you don't want to have to bury a tail. So we call hemming it. You take it, and you fold your tail over, and the boxes are layered one on top of the other. So it becomes doubled. You take your knitting needle, and you go from back towards you picking up your stitches from the back towards you, and again, over towards you, over towards you, over towards you. You put on as many or as few stitches as you want. And it's anywhere from, you know, six to 14 or 15 stitches. And you can see how they sit on the needle with the ends being hemmed, so you see the double, okay? 
and you can spread it out along the needle. I try and just push them up towards the point of the needle. That way the, the yarn kind of gets to know that it's gonna be ruffled. So you've got your stitches, you turn around, and all you're gonna do is knit. You put your needle in, just like it's regular knitting, and the motion of going over the needle, you're gonna take that same motion, pick up the top thread of the next box, and come through. So you've now knit the stitch. You go in, pick up the top of the next box in that motion, and come through. And all you're knitting now is the thread that sits at the top of the box, one stitch to one stitch, all in a row. And you just repeat across the row. When you get to the very end, you've got your hemmed stitches, so you see them doubled, but you're taking one to two, like knitting two together. And what that does is create a really pretty ruffle, and your tail is buried, so you have nothing to bury. And you just turn around, and you keep going. And you make ruffles. And, and you make ruffles. And you're making, again, ruffles on either side, because it's garter stitch. It's and the all ruffles garter get, stitch. The ruffles get pushed to the wrong side, basically. Okay. Right, so it looks circular. Mm -hmm. You can do stockinette, where you knit a row, purl a row, and you get all the ruffles on one side, and it becomes doubled. Okay. Well, Laura, quickly show them that scarf there. That's this what one you on were the end with, is correct? the same yarn that Barry yeah. was just knitting with. Uh -huh. He's used two solid colors here, a lime green and a gray, held oh, together. So, so oh, what you get okay. is looking in one direction, you really see the green. Looking mm -hmm. in the other direction, you really see the gray. And so it's kind uh -huh. of um, it gives it a nap look, like velvet would have, yeah, or, or tie silks, where the warps and wefts are different. Yes. And no matter what ribbon you use, the technique is the same. You're picking up the edge, you can layer the two different kinds of ribbons, but you always hem it and layer it by picking up the well, edge. Thanks, guys. This is just great. I can't wait. The minute we're offset, I'm doing this.